the 2024 general meeting of electors open at 6.30 p.m. Presiding member being uh, myself, I acknowledge the Noongar people of the Budja, the land that we gather on today. For thousands of years, their connection to country has provided knowledge, guidance, spirituality and life. We pay our respects to this ongoing connection, as well as their elders past, present and emerging. I remind all members of the gallery that are present here tonight that this meeting will be audio recorded. If you're asking a public question, making a statement or putting forward a motion, this will be audio recorded. Members of the public are reminded that no other visual or audio recording of this meeting by any other means is allowed. The procedures for the meeting are as specified in the Act and the Local Government Administration Regulations of 1996. The legislation states that the procedure to be followed at the meeting is determined by the presiding member at the meeting. This meeting tonight will be generally conducted in line with the Shire's standing orders. Regulation 18 of the Local Government Administration Regulations 1996 state that each elector who is present at a general or special meeting of electors is entitled to one vote on each matter to be decided at the meeting but does not have to vote. All decisions at a general or special meeting of electors are to be made by a simple majority of voters. Voting at a general or special meeting of electors is to be conducted so that no voters vote is secret. The structure for this meeting this evening shall be, firstly, public questions of which notice has been given, public questions received from the floor, public statements of which prior notice has been given, public statements received from the floor, motions of which prior notice has been given, motions received from the floor. Each elector wishing to ask a question may ask a maximum of three questions related to the purpose of this meeting. Public statements must be no greater than three minutes in length. Motions may be debated with speakers for and against the motion. No speaker may speak for greater than five minutes regarding any motion. The provisions related to, to conduct that operate in the standing orders are to apply. This means that each person present is to extend due courtesy and respect to all in attendance. And I'll stress that point again, members of the public, and I'll say that again. Each person is to extend due courtesy and respect to all people in attendance. Electors were provided with a voting card. When a motion is called for a vote, electors are to raise their card to determine the motion is carried or is lost. Decisions made at this meeting will be considered at a future council meeting in accordance with the legislation. That brings us to agenda item number two on the agenda, which is the President's report. And I'm going to move forward uh, closer to the public. Um, before I Is that working? Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Also, I must go back to agenda item number one, which is attendance and apologies, and there are no um, apologies received. Um, it's my pleasure to stand here as your Shire President, the first directly elected Shire President for the Shire of Serpentine, Jaredale. So firstly, good evening, residents and ratepayers. And uh, as I alluded to, thank you very much for making the effort this evening to attend that annual electors meeting. This occasion is pivotal in fostering community engagement and transparency within our Shire. Today, I want to emphasise the significance of our annual report and the role it plays in ensuring accountability and openness. The annual report serves as a comprehensive overview of the Shire's activities, our accomplishments and our financial status over the last year. It provides a transparent account of how public funds are used, showcasing our commitment to responsible governance. Transparency is not a bureaucratic term. It is a cornerstone of a thriving and participatory democracy. Through this report, we share the fruits of our collective efforts, celebrate achievements and acknowledge areas for our own improvement. It's a testament to the collaboration between the Shire and you, our residents and ratepayers, as your involvement, feedback and scrutiny are vital as they contribute to a more informed and responsive local government. As we discuss the annual report this evening, let us remember that transparency breeds trust. It builds a bridge between the Shire and our community. 
Fostering relationship, brand and openness, and shared responsibility. By staying informed, you empower yourselves as active participants in the decision-making process that shape our community's future. I encourage each of you to take the time to review the annual report and do so diligently. Your insights and questions strengthen the democratic fabric of our shire, ensuring that we as elected representatives remain accountable to the people that we serve. And I've put all councillors together at the table tonight for that particular reason to see that you as our residents and ratepayers can see we are here to serve you. In emphasising transparency, we not only need regulatory requirements, but also uphold the principles underpin a vibrant and flourishing community. I'm proud of the changes that council has made to improve transparency and accountability. This has included greater access to councils through our community at Sundowner, which is a council in the community. And that's held the last Saturday of each month at the SJ Farmers Market out the front. I've also instilled sharing of duties within councillors since October. It's the intent of this council to be connected with our community. Since I became the Shire's first directly elected president in October last year, we have made changes in the way that council does its business. Our meetings are made to be more open and transparent. We've been working hard to make our council meetings more accessible and responsive to your needs. We've introduced changes like the on-block approach, streamlining the approval process for routine matters, ensuring we make the most of your time and focus on issues that truly matter. Additionally, we're making it easier for you to have your say by allowing questions and statements without any prior notice. This means you, as residents and ratepayers, can speak up about what's important to you, fostering a more dynamic and inclusive dialogue between the community and us as your councillors. These changes are part of an ongoing commitment to create a council that's connected with our community, putting your needs at the forefront of our decision-making process. Your input is invaluable. We want to make sure that you feel heard and involved in shaping the future of your shire. Plus, we want to hear from you without needing any notice. Simply speak up. Let's also take a moment to appreciate our volunteers, especially during tough times, like the recent bushfires and those that are present on Australia Day, I went to great extent to talk about our volunteers. They do really embody our true Australian spirit and the efforts make a very big difference in our shire. They are the heart and soul of our community. They're the everyday heroes who selflessly give their time and their energy to make a positive impact on the life of others. Whether it's their vital work during the recent bushfires or contributing to various ways and community events and activities, our volunteers embody mateship and community solidarity. Their dedication goes beyond words. It's seen in the smiles that they bring, the support they offer, and their collective strength that they provide. They're the unsung champions who play a crucial role in building the fabric of our community, making it a better, more committed place for all of us. So a heartfelt thank you to each and every volunteer. You are the backbone of our Shire and your efforts don't go unnoticed. Thank you. So in closing, let's make this annual electors meeting a symbol of our commitment to keeping things open, accountable and community focused. Together, we can make our shire an even better place to live, work and play. Thanks again for being here and let's look forward to a future where we all chip in and make this shire the best place it could be. Thank you very much. Item 2.2 on the agenda is the Chief Executive Officer's report. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. President, and uh, it's great to be here to present this report to you. I'm just going to read from my report that's in the um, annual report, so you can read it again at your leisure if you're excited to do so. <coughs> Over the past year, I'm pleased to report the Shire was able to achieve three of its key performance indicators outlined in our corporate business plan, a significant milestone for the organisation. 
These indicators are an addition, uh, additional method to ensure achievement and include completion of 80% of the strategic operating projects by their due date, of which was 12 from 15, uh, were completed and 80% improvement on the previous year, which we only achieved 35%. 80% of our planned road projects were required to be delivered, and the Shire exceeded this with an impressive result of 82%. This achievement highlights the Shire's dedication to fostering a safer road network and a commitment to address community priorities as identified within the Community Perception Survey. Also, and Fraser's going to talk about this in a little while as well, we've consistently upheld our strong financial health indicator above 70 for the last two years. It's been 75 in this year just gone and 73 in the year before, affirming our ongoing responsible management despite two years of significant inflationary pressures. Through sound financial management, the show has only been successful in maintaining its financial health. We've also demonstrated some improvement, as Fraser will show. <clears throat> the show has been able to do this by continuing to focus heavily on asset renewal programs while simultaneously be trying to keep operating costs to a minimum. Our commitment to excellence extends beyond the CBP key performance indicators as we made great progress towards our government funded projects, including hyper growth road upgrades, stage two of the Byford Skate Park, New Oakford Volunteer Bush Fire Brigade Station, and the first stage of the Keenan Park Recreation Sporting Precinct. We also delivered a full on range of events post COVID, including Muddy Buddies and the popular SJ Rocks Food Truck Fiesta Series. We reviewed our strategic community plan, we've delivered an equine road safety awareness campaign. We've renewed 14 kilometres of trails around Darling Downs, re renewed our five-year contract with um, SJ Landcare. We've committed to addressing the impacts of climate change by signing on to the Wilga Climate Change Declaration. We've made some great progress in improving the office accommodation here in this administration building, but also equally important at the depot. <coughs> the council, council's endorsed its advocacy priorities for the 2025 state and, local, uh, state and federal government elections. And we've developed a, a master plan for the Clem Clentius Reserve. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the community, council, and dedicated Shire staff for their commitment and hard work, making these past 12 months a remarkable achievement. I look forward to the opportunities that lie ahead for SJ in the next financial year. Uh, thank you, Mr. CEO. That brings us to agenda item 2.3, which is your orders report. And I ask the Director of Corporate Services, uh, Mr. Fraser Sullivan, to make his address. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so, from the Auditor General, Independent Auditors Report 2023 for the Shire of Serpentine Jaradal, the Council of the Shire of Serpentine Jaradal, my opinion. I have audited the financial report of the Shire of Serpentine Jaradale, which comprises the Statement of Financial Position as at 30 June 2023, and the Statement of Comprehensive Income, Statement of Changes in Equity, Statement of Cash Flows, and Statement of Financial Activity for the year then ended. Notes comprising a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory information. In my opinion, the financial report is based on proper accounts and records, presents fairly in all material respects, the results of the operations of the Shire for the year end of 30 June 2023, and its financial position at the end of that period. In accordance with the Local Government Act 1995, the Act, and to the extent that they are not inconsistent with the Act and the Australian Accounting Standards. And the basis of that opinion, I have conducted my audit in accordance with the Australian Accounting Standards. My responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibility for the audit of the financial report section below. I believe the audit evidence I obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for my opinion. So that said, essentially, that is the Auditor General of Western Australia stating that our accounts are in good order and can be relied on for decision making purposes. Uh, and to that end, I'll now go on to a small presentation. Uh, to give some insights to the state of the finances of the Shire. So, for new people to the electors meeting, many of you I know have seen me present these before, but uh, I'll give you a little insight to accounting for local government, and that being that uh, but profit is important. 
most people would think they're a non-profit organisation, uh, and that may be true, but profits from an accounting sense are important because they represent the hard assets of the Shire, of the community, in and on the ground. Um, and so I'm very pleased to announce that this year we've made a profit of 19232704000 So what that means is the assets of the Shire increased by that amount this year. And the difference between uh, a, a business and us is that the business would want that to be cash so they could distribute it as dividends. However, for us, they appear as roads, parks, drains, etc. So that number includes uh, a recognition of gifted assets. So many of the assets, new assets of the Shire come from developers as they do their subdivisions, they build roads and drains and pass them over to the Shire for maintenance and ongoing uh, operation. So their contribution has down a little this year. They contributed $10,235,961 compared to $14.6 million last year. But happily, uh, the organisation uh, contributed nine million, or a little over nine million dollars this year, uh, as opposed to only a little, just short of seven million previously. So it just goes to uh, uh, some of the points that the CEO mentioned about our increasing performance. Now, further from that, the local government department also has a uh, thing called a financial health indicator. It measures a number of aspects of the finances of the Shire, and this year I'm very pleased to announce that. that has come in at 75, a score of 75 for us this year, as opposed to a 73 last year. So I'll just run through the, the ratios that that score is based on. So the first ratio is the current ratio. Now that ratio describes our ability to pay our uh, debts as and when they fall due. Any ratio over one suggests that that is the case. We've got more cash than liabilities. Coming at 1.55 is an excellent result uh, in that regard. The next item being the asset consumption ratio. So essentially that describes of our total asset base of approximately $750 million, we've actually only consumed about 18% of that. Uh, the asset renewal ratio of 104, it measures uh, the ability or the projected ability of the organisation to meet its renewal asset renewal requirements over the next 10 years. Uh, the asset sustainability ratio of 0.9, uh, it measures the extent to which assets managed by the local government are being replaced. So just for this year, how did you go, like of, of, of what percentage of the depreciation did you replace? So we lost an amount of, the, uh, of asset value via depreciation, but we actually replaced 0.9 of that uh, for the year. The debt service ratio at six, you can see that the benchmark is 1.9, anything over 1.9 is fine. 6.04 is a robust position as far as debt is uh, concerned for the council or for the shire. The operating surplus ratio, and we'll go on to talk about this a little later or after we get past this slide. So that just, that talks about essentially our own source funding. And because this uh, benchmark is set by the state government, you would appreciate that they would like us to provide um, the, the bulk of the expenditure of the Shire. Obviously, as residents of the Shire, you perhaps might have a different view of that. So at point nine, they don't think we're doing quite well enough in that regard, but I'll talk to you a little bit later about how I think we're going in that regard. And then our own source revenue is 0.82, um, uh, as opposed to the 0.35 benchmark. So again, we're fine in that regard. If we could stand. So the operating surplus ratio. So the two there's two great drivers causing that is really the ongoing inflationary pressure that we're feeling, and that's leading into increased asset values. So each year we're required to do an assessment. Do the, do the asset values in the accounts, are they accurate? Uh, and if inflationary pressure is rising, those replacement costs of, of those assets is rising and it drives higher asset values and therefore higher depreciation costs. Uh, so when any asset work that we're doing, any expenditure, you'll need to spend more essentially. That pressure isn't going away. So 
if you were going to raise funds to address those issues, uh, I guess uh, other government agencies or others would like us to do that from our rate base, from the residents of this organisation. Uh, we have chosen a slightly different strategy, so it's always good to have that have a reasonable contribution, and you do need to make a reasonable contribution because no grant funding is ever 100% funding. There has to be some contribution from the local community. But I'd just like you to draw your attention to the bottom line here, and it's the significant increase in capital grants over the last four years. So essentially, the way that we're making all of those other ratios look good is a significant focus into drawing in capital funds uh, or capital grants from state and federal government agencies. And I've just got these other numbers up here to see the significant increase in uh, asset values that we've seen in the last little while, chiefly the inflationary pressure, and which is feeding into increasing depreciation costs. So essentially what they're saying is we should be spending this sort of money every year on assets. And you could I suggest to you that the rate rises uh, needed to accomplish that would be extremely significant. But nonetheless, uh, we've managed, we've done very well. And I foresee through the work of the, particularly the Director of Infrastructure in the last 12 months is one significant assets, particularly focused around um, uh, black spot areas and crash using crash data and that sort of thing. So I foresee that going on into the future for at least the next three or four years. Uh, and uh, certainly the CEO and the president have been working diligently uh, preparing advocacy, advocacy strategies for the upcoming elections in 2025. And certainly all council has been focused on that as well. And that's as much as I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director. Uh, that brings us to agenda item 2.4. Agenda item 2.4 is the receiving of the annual report incorporating the annual financial statements for the year ending 30th of June 2023. Um, that is a motion, and as this is uh, the electors meeting, I put that motion forward and I do ask for someone to move that motion. So the motion is as per the screen, um, 2.4. Thank you. So it's moved by um, Michelle Rich. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Dave Atwell. Um, is there anyone opposed to this motion? This motion is passed unanimously. That brings us to agenda item number three, which is business of tonight's um, general meeting of electors. 3.1 is public questions of which prior notice has been given. The first question that we have received is from a Mr. Daniel Matheson. I would ask Mr. Daniel Matheson to come forward and ask his question. Good evening. I'll read this off my phone. Yes. Okay. Um, so I moved to Whitby as a renter in June of 2023, and I'm also building a new home in Whitby. I noticed the near zero mobile coverage in Whitby immediately and talking to neighbours confirmed this is a <clears throat> long running problem. A battle with Telstra to get a partial refund of some bills relating to that lack of coverage. Um, I read the ordinary council meeting minutes from 20 March 2023 and took particular interest in Ms Brazier's roasting of councillors over their handling Telstra's development application for a mobile service tower at 345 Kino Street, Whitby. Also, the application from November 2022 states the construction of the mobile base station will take approximately five weeks over non-consecutive periods subject to weather. I've noticed since I moved to Whitby that a bare tower has been constructed at that location, but it has no mobile service equipment at the top and nothing has happened at that site for months. Plus Telstra, they have no idea what's happening and told me, quote, there is an outage currently that may be affecting your service it will be fixed soon and more recently when I inquired they said quote this has been updated by our mobile testers team and advised they are already conducting an upgrade on the location to better improve the quality of the service in the next 12 months they did not advise any time frame yet but you can rest assured this has been forwarded to a plan upgraded soon 
end quote. Uh, can the council please provide an estimated date when the new tower will be finished and providing actual mobile service to Whitten? Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Matheson, for your question. I do empathise with um, your concern. I will ask the Director of Development Services to provide an answer to your question. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for the question. Officers had been advised by the applicant uh, in late last year that they aim to have completed and make operational the tower within the first half of this year. I'd just like to add I've received just now an email from Telstra at 5.49pm and they have advised that they now believe it will be operational in the second half of this year. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, um, Director. Um, the second question received is from Ms um, Kelly Berry. Um, I would ask uh, Ms Berry to come forward and ask her question. Thing. Clarify a question after the last electors meeting, and it's a bit different tonight with the councillors sitting around, but at any electors meeting, are councillors at the meeting as councillors or are just as ratepayers? I guess the question is, are councillors a councillor 24-7? Uh, thank you for your question, Ms Berry. Um, I would ask the Director of Corporate Services to provide an answer. Thank you, Mr President. Yes. Uh, thank you, Director. Uh, Ms Berry, would you like to ask your second question? Just a follow on from that. So if a councillor does post on Facebook stating that it is their personal opinion that they're stating, it really is the opinion as a council representative of the Shire then? Sorry, is that a rhetorical question, Ms Berry? Would you like an answer provided? No, I don't need an answer for that. Thank you. Would you like to please ask your um, second question? Sure. What is the council doing about income producing assets and when will the plan be disclosed to the public? Thank you for the question, Ms. Berry. I will um, again ask the Director of Corporate Service to provide an answer. Thank you, Mr. President. I've got to say good evening, Elliot. Sorry. Good evening, Ms. Berry. Uh, the Shire's corporate business plan is currently under review. Uh, officers are exploring initiatives and strategies for income producing assets for Council's consideration as part of this review. Uh, thank you, Ms. Berry. Um, I would ask uh, Ms. Michelle Rich to come forward and ask her questions. Um, there are six questions that have been received. I'm happy for Ms Rich to ask all six questions. Good evening, Council. My first question is please provide what the monetary saving was shown as a percentage of the labour component resulting from the Council decision OCM 020-02-19. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms Rich. That question will be taken on notice and answer will be provided in due course. Would you like to ask your second question? Thank you. My second question is, please provide what the monetary saving was shown as a, present, as a percentage of the labour component resulting from council decision OCM 021-02-19. Again, thank you for your question, Ms Rich. Um, again, this question will be taken on notice and answer will be provided in due course. Would you like to ask your third question? Thank you. My third question, please list all the avenues that are available for an item, project or repair to be put forward for consideration in the budget deliberations for the 2024-25 financial years budget of the Shire of Serpentine Jaredale. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rich, for your third question. I will ask the Director of Corporate Services to provide an answer to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Ms. Rich. Uh, councillors have items included in the budget deliberations by the following means notice of motion, council resolutions, input at council budget workshops. This year, officers have invited submission from councillors for consideration as part of the corporate business plan major review and annual budget setting process. In prior years, councillors routinely added and subtracted projects from the budget and corporate business plan during council workshops and at adoption without any objective assessment being or with limited objective assistance assessments being performed. This year, the process has been formalised to require those suggestions to be put in writing earlier in the process to allow time for costing and planning in keeping with good project management methodologies. Officers build the draft budget using the following. 
council plans, corporate business plan, long-term financial plan, business cases, customer requests, council adopted strategies and plans, recommendations and, suge and suge suggestions from advisory groups, grant opportunities, asset management information, and prior year expenditure. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Ms Rich, would you like to ask your fourth question? Thank you. My fourth question is, please confirm that all councillor elect electoral gift declarations as received by the CEO have been published to the Electoral Gift Register, Shire of Serpentine Jaradar website, relating to the 2023 local government election. Uh, thank you, Ms Rich, for your fourth question. I'll ask the Chief Executive Officer to provide a response. Good evening, Ms Rich. Uh, yes, to the best of my knowledge, that's the case. Thank you very much. Thank you, CEO. And Ms Rich, would like to ask your fifth question. Thank you. My fifth question is, does the Shire of Serpentine Jaradale pay a stall site fee or donate to any not-for-profit community group for the council in the community stall held once a month at the SJ Farmers Market? Um, I'll answer that question for you, Ms Rich, and the answer is yes. Um, we pay $50 per month to have the stall at the markets, and that $50 uh, includes the setup and removal of that um, site and stall. Would you like to ask your sixth question? Thank you. My sixth question is, are there any associated costs with delivering the council in the community beyond the stall fees? Uh, thank you again for your last question, Ms Rich. Um, yes, there are some minor costs associated with printing promotional material distributed by councils at this event. And what I would say, since you've asked the question, is I've been very proud of the three council and the community events that we've held. Um, five councillors have attended each event. Thank you. And That's it's a been a um, very successful event. Thank you very much, Ms Rich. Um, that is the end of the questions received in writing. Are there any questions that anyone would like to ask from the floor? Uh, the gentleman on the right. And I would ask, as you come forward, please state your name and uh, suburb of residence. Jim Anderson, 24 McKay Drive, Serving Time. I'd like to know what's going on with the transfer station. A lot of rate payers I've spoken to recently have really annoyed the fact that it's shut for so long, and now we're advised it's going to be, it won't be open for a year or two. But what is going on with it? Um, thank you very much for your question. Um, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that this is an issue for the Shire. I will provide an answer as a Shire president, and then I will ask the Director of Infrastructure to um, add any weight um, that I may give in my answer. So thank you very much for the question. I've just stood up here a few moments ago and talked about us caring for the community and what I'm trying to do as a Shire president. I make no mistake and make no apologies for the fact that we have closed the waste transfer station and we have done so on the advice that we have received. I look at you in the eyes, I look at all residents and ratepayers in this room and I say, the safety of our residents, our community, my staff, or our staff, I should say, is the first um, priority for me as a Shire president. We will not open the waste transfer station if there is any risk whatsoever for any um, asbestos being um, inhaled or being absorbed by any resident, ratepayer or staff. That's the first thing I want to say. The next thing, um, we were, I would say we showed great agility in coming up with a solution that was the best of the residents and ratepayers and also being financially responsible. That was um, tip passes with an agreement with the City of Armidale to uh, tip passes per household. I think that has worked okay. It hasn't been perfect, but it's worked okay. We've also, and I acknowledge the work the staff have done in relation to this, provided a green waste collection between November and December. Again, as a president, I'll sit here and say that wasn't perfect, but I'm pretty well proud of what the staff have done to achieve that. They've been responsive and they've been agile in listening to the community's concerns. There were some members of the public who hadn't had their green waste collected a week or so around Christmas. Councillors had made that known and the staff responded and people had their waste or green waste collection collected. That is a shire. That is a service I'm proud of as a president. That is what this shire is all about, is to listen to our community, to respond and to care. 
moving forward, I understand that the rate um, or the, the pass has expired today. I understand today that the City of Armidale closed the tip. That quite simply is an act of God. Not even the Shire President can change that. If I could, I would. If there's any option for us, we will workshop that as councils as we did on Monday night. The other thing I would say is moving forward, we've got a tender process. It's going to come to council very soon. We're aiming and aiming at this point. I can't make any comment because a tender hasn't been um, awarded yet. The plan is, and this is us listening to our community, people want hard waste collection from their verge. People want green waste collection from their verge. So we're in the process now of doing a tender that will enable us to do a valet service for hard waste and a green waste collection. Um, I can't shy away from it. I'm not going to talk rubbish, pardon the pun. This is a challenge for us as a community. This is a challenge for us as a council. I'm not going to sit here and say we haven't done anything or that we've done everything we can. I think we can do more. We are doing about green waste, though. It's not green waste. It's the people that are dumping rubbish, fridges, washing machines, couches, yeah. all around the streets. I reported five, but this is the cost of the Shire. Okay. And, and this is ludicrous. What is the reason that the, it was shut? I understand there's a lot of rumours getting around that the actual crust, the clay crust there, was broken by with someone digging a trench across there. Now, this is an easy, this is an easy fix, surely. If you've got some suggestions, please, um, and I did give you my business card before this meeting, if you want to email me, you're more than happy to. What I would say, and I'll go to the director in a moment to talk about the technicalities and why the the tip was um, the waste transfer station was closed. But quite simply, I don't shy away from the fact that we've closed it because I'm not going to be a president of a shire that puts their residents or community at risk. If so that's an issue, we need, yeah. we need to know why. We need to okay. know the so reason. So I will defer. What caused it? Yep. And secondly, why hasn't the public been informed, even by social media? Yeah. Okay. So I will defer. Okay. So in terms of communications, we have done a robust plan every Friday. We've been sending out communication. We talk about the council and the community. The last three council and communities we've done, we've had flyers there to talk to people about the waste transfer station. What we will now do, we provided um, tip passes, as I said. The other thing I would stress to you is you talk about dumping of white goods. Residents and ratepayers can access the tip at the City of Armidale free of charge to dump any white goods. Now, that's what I'll say at this point. If you've got any other questions for me, but I would ask the director if he would like to um, add any more weight to the actual background to the waste transfer station. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening. Um, so, in September, when we were investigating for some drainage works, we found some asbestos below ground at waste transfer station. We did more investigation. We found fragments of asbestos spread widely across the site, above the ground, and also we found more below ground where the old tip site used to be. So the cap that was put on the old tip site, we found that the thickness of that had worn out. It was reduced to at places for about 100 mil. Um, we got consultants to do further testing. Um, air monitoring, and it was declared as a contaminated site and a hazard, safety hazard for access by contractors, shire staff, and residents. So that's the reason it was closed because it was a health risk. So, um, following that, we took a report to council in way forward in October. In December, we engaged consultants to go and do further investigation. It was a plan, costed plan, in um, for rehabilitation and remediation of the site. We engaged them in December. They're working on that now. So we're expecting that work to be finished. We take that to council in June to decide whether it can be rehabilitated or remediated, reopened, or should be kept closed. So that's where we're at with the asbestos issue. Um, we are in the procurement process for another round of green waste that we're on track for a May average collection for green waste. We're also working on a tender for um, on-demand uh, bulk waste collection. So we're on track to take that to council in April, and we think that service could be rolled, rolled out in May or June. 
And what are the cost implications of trying to show them in the rate payments? So the, the, no, this is the EPA I put out as a paper on paper. I've checked with engineers today, and it requires a 450 mil to 600 mil clay crust across that site. It's a simple fix. Come up, one Mr. President. So yes, yes, we're aware we're aware of all that. Um, oh, my microphone's going funny. Sorry. Um, and when that site was rehabilitated, the the um, the uh, requirements have changed since that time. So the requirements for the thickness of the cap and the um, uh, different colours of sand that are used and plastic coating have all changed since then. So we've been operating the transfer station on a site that probably didn't have the right cap put on it in the first place. And so this is a precaution to go back and say, what level should that and thickness should that cap be, particularly for driving big trucks on it? Because I'm sure, as you can appreciate, if you had a cap on an old rubbish site, which was just being rehabilitated for shrubs and trees, you wouldn't need much. But if you're driving loaders and cars and things on there every day, then the quality of that cap needs to be able to stand that. So the recommendation that these consultants are doing now is actually going to provide us what the recommendations for the thickness of the cap should be and what the cost would that would be um, for the council to consider. So the council hasn't made a decision on whether the transfer station will remain closed or reopen yet. We're just going to get this information first which I must say was recommended by all the stakeholders from the state that we talked about. They said you need to do a detailed site investigation. You can't just go along and pick up the bits of asbestos and reopen it, <clears throat> which is what we're doing now. So we're sort of going back a bit and then coming forward in that regard. That makes sense. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I think, um, Ms. Berry, do you have a question to ask? Good evening, Mr. President, councillors. Uh, Mike. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, Serky, please state your name and like. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, Eric Ball, I'm from Byford. Thank you. Uh, my question relates to the WA Local Government Association and its relationship with the Shire. Well, well. And um, the questions uh, follow the um, recommendations made by Welga publicly and through the media telling people how they should be voting in the referendum to change our Australian constitution. How dare they do that? And so my first question, Mr. President, is um, did the president or any member of the council or any Shire officer have a conversation with Welga regarding their proposal that uh, we should be voting one way or the other on the Referendum to change our constitution? And if so, what was the outcome of that conversation? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I'm not sure whether you want to ask every councillor that was a councillor at that time for their position. Um, I wasn't the president when the referendum happened. I think it was the 14th of October last year. Um, I certainly um, didn't make my personal opinion known. It is not the place of local government to influence decisions like that. That's a federal government uh, issue. Um, I did receive an email from the LGIU, which is local government. Um, I can't remember what the IU stands for. Um, their position was to support a yes vote. I replied back to them and said, is that what you're telling um, all local governments? And they said, yes. Um, that is the only um, information or any influence I received as a councillor leading up to the 14th of October 2023. Mr Ball, you asked the question, during that time I was a candidate for the Shire President's position. No one asked me what my position was in voting yes or no, and if they did ask me, I would say it's not relevant to local government. Mr Ball, if you'd like to ask other councillors or um, other people, that's up to you, but certainly I'm not aware of anyone in this room um, telling people how to vote in terms of yes or no for the referendum. My conclusion was how dare Welga try to tell people how to vote, no matter which way they went. A second question, which is a follow on, is has the president or any member of the council or staff had a conversation with any officer at Welga regarding the date for celebrating Australia Day or for the conduct of naturalisation ceremonies 
on Australia Day? Uh, thank you, Mr. Ball, for your question. I'm happy to answer that because I was the president um, leading up to Australia Day. I'm particularly proud of this country. I love this country. I love what we stand for. I'm a veteran and I love what we do. I have no indication or no desire as the Shire president to change the date of Australia Day from the 26th of January. That is a personal opinion of mine. At no point were we told as a Shire to change the date. At no point was Walga uh, influencing us to change the date. You may have seen some recent media articles, the front page of West Australia, talking about some Shires and local governments who had decided to celebrate a different date. That's their business. Whilst I'm the Shire president, community willing, we will not be changing the date. Australia Day is the 26th of January, and that's my opinion. Thank you, Mr President. Are there any other questions from the floor? Uh, Ms Berry. Thank you again. Um, actually, a question for yourself, President Coles. During the uh, 2023 presidential election, you were campaigning and stating you would do a 100-day plan if elected. Um, your 100 days are up this week. Um, so can you tell the electors what the plan was what the outcomes were, and when will it be made available to the public? Uh, thank you very much for the question, Ms Berry. I have got a draft of my 100-day plan here on my laptop. If you'd like to indulge me, I'm happy to read that out, or I can surmise it. Either way, that will be released within the next couple of weeks. I have a meeting with the Manager of Communications tomorrow, and one of the agenda items is to finalise a 100-day plan and for that to be released. I have talked some highlights of my 100-day plan tonight as my address to the electors here tonight as part of the Shire's report. My whole 100-day plan, if you remember, was to listen, to care and to act. I have talked ad nauseum tonight about listening to the community. That has been um, shown with the council and the community. It has been further shown with um, changes to the agenda and the way that ordinary council meetings um, are occurring. The other key thing is um, opening up other councils to be involved. I think Australia Day was testament to the way that this council can work together. All councils were involved. All councils were part of sharing the spirit that is Australia. All councillors were involved in presenting awards to people that uh, were recipients of those awards. And it's really nice when you have councillors like Councillor Jarrett, who was a previous recipient of an award, and he's able to present that award. This is a council that cares. This is a council that listens. This is a council that will do the very best they can for the community. So if you'd like me to send you my 100-day plan, I'm more than happy to. But rest assured, the promises I've made during the campaign leading up to the 21st or 22nd of October 2023, I'm happy to stand by. You can stand there. You can question my integrity. You can ask what I do until the cows come home. But I'm very, very confident in what I have done and what this Shire will achieve together as councillors moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. I would appreciate the help with that. Um, and it was just something that I wasn't really questioning your integrity on that question. Um, can I ask one more question? Certainly. Um, along the lines of accountability and openness of what you stated in your, uh, your, your statement before, are you still employed as a police officer? And if so, how many days a week are you working as a police officer? Uh, yes, I'm employed by a police officer. I'm part-time. It depends on my work commitments, both as a police officer and as Shire um, President. Um, any further details um, I'm not going to declare or tell you because, uh, quite frankly, um, I have been able to achieve my job as a Shire President. My attendance, my calendar, that what I attend, what I do is open to the public. If you would like to see what I do, you can. So um, I believe I've answered that question. So since you're not a full-time President of the Shire, are you taking the full 75% of the annual allowance fees as determined in 2017, or have you provided them down accordingly, seeing you have another, have another job? I am re receiving uh, $6,056 a month, which equates to about $72,000 a year. What I would also say, Ms Berry, because you seem very keen to know what my financial situation is, I do make donations to community groups. I'll stop uh, you there, um, Councillor Coles. I'm actually questioning what the rate payers are paying for, because I would actually assume we would have a full-time Shire President. 
And as such, if you're not a full-time shark president, I would hope the ratepayers aren't paying a full-time fee. And as it turns out, they actually are. So, so Ms Berry, may I ask you a question before you turn around and walk away? What do you expect? How many hours a week do you think is a full-time president? I expect you not to be working in another role that considers a full-time president. That, that, that gives the ratepayers and the electors your full attention. Could I can I please ask the gallery to please be quiet? I'm more than happy to stand here or sit here and ask and ask answer any question. If people want to throw stones, that's fine. I'm quite comfortable in what I do. And I'm quite comfortable in the commitment that I make to the residents and ratepayers. Thank you for your question. Are there any other questions from the floor? Thank you, Mrs. Bond. Don't have to put up with it. I don't want to bore you to tears. What is the fine for putting rolls of old rusty barbed wire into your neighbour's recycling bin? Does council enforce this fine? If not, who does and how does the victim get justice should a fine be levied against them? Uh, Mrs Bond, we will take that question on notice. Are council employees required to adhere to privacy rules regarding council, or is it permissible for them to spread claims informing members of the public said claims are fact? Thank you for your question, Mrs Bond. Again, we'll take that on notice. Sorry, sorry. What efforts have been made to expedite the building of a proper dog town? Six years is way too long to keep innocent animals incarcerated in the disgrace of Watkins Road. Has the temperature been recorded in that tin shack during the heat? If not, why not? And have any animals been held in the heat? If yes, how many and what time? We will take that question on notice, Mrs Bond, but what I will say is I did mention that during the campaign to look at options to improve that pound, so that is certainly something that's front and centre of this council. But thank you for the question. The answer will be provided to you in due course. Do you have any other questions? Okay, Mrs Rich, sorry. Uh, Mrs Rich, I'd like to come forward and ask your question. Thank you. As a concerned member of our community, I would like to bring attention an aspect of our local council's operation that aligns with the commitment to accountability and transparency that has been emphasised. It has been widely communicated that your leadership aims to ensure the active participation and engagement of the community in every decision made by the local council. This commitment is particularly crucial in fostering an open dialogue and building trust between the council and its constituents. However, it has come to my attention that the publication of the President's calendar, a significant tool for fostering transparency, has ceased since the local government elections in October 21st, 2023. The availability of the President's calendar has traditionally served as a valuable resource for the community, offering insights into the schedule and engagements of our local leadership. This transparency has played a pivotal role in keeping residents informed and engaged in the decision-making processes that impact our community. Understanding the complexities of managing the affairs of the council and the president's busy schedule, I am interested in gaining clarity on the reasons behind the discontinuation of the publication of the calendar. Reinstating the regular release of the president's calendar would not only align with the commitment to transparency, but also demonstrate a steadfast dedication to keeping the community informed and involved. I appreciate your time and consideration in addressing this matter. A transparent and accountable local government is vital for the well-being and cohesion of our community. And I believe that the publication of the President's calendar serves as an integral component of this commitment. Thank you for your attention to this concern. I look forward to hearing your insights, reason, reasoning, and any steps that may be taken to reinstate the publication of the President's calendar. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms Rich. Um, I made a concerted effort as the President that it's not about me. 
and some people might find that hard to believe, but I'm not here to grandstand. I have reflected upon what I'm here to do and what I am to do for the community. I believe that publishing in the agenda, grandstanding to show what the Shire President has done for the month serves no purpose. There are other ways for people to know what the Shire President does. There are other ways for other councillors to for councillors to know what I'm doing, such as Friday Facts, which is published every Friday, so they know what I'm doing. More importantly, it's important that members of the public know what other councils are doing. So why should I, as one of six or one of seven after the election, why should I grandstand? Why should I, as the president, be front and centre, telling everyone what I'm doing when that opportunity is not relevant or cannot be done by my fellow councillors? It is not about Rob Coles. It is not about the Shire president. It is about us as councillors being collegiate, us working together for the greater good. And I would remind members of the public, if you find this funny, I would ask you to leave. What I would further say is if people want to know what I'm doing, you can see on my Facebook page what I'm doing. I am accessible. My phone is always on. My email address is always monitored. If people want to know what I'm doing, there is no issues whatsoever in them finding out what I am doing. There is no need for me to grandstand, to highlight me as an individual when I've made it very clear. One of your friends just asked a question about my 100-day plan. One of the aims of my 100-day plan was to bring together a council. I think you've answered I'm not a council. I'm actually... Follow-up question, if I may. So I actually My think it's... understanding is that the Friday Facts is a confidential report that is sent to councillors every Friday. So how then do the community know what is in Friday Facts, given that yeah. it's confidential? Yeah, thank you for your uh, question, Ms Rich. Um, as I said, Friday Facts is a way for other councillors to know what I'm doing. Um, actually, the other thing I do as a president is I meet with the CEO regularly every week and the outcomes from that meeting are shared with all councillors. So it's the first time in six years that other councillors actually know what the president is doing, where he or she is going, and what the plan is for the week, and what we're trying to achieve. Because again, Ms Rich, whilst you might find this amusing, I'm not here to grandstand. I'm not here as an individual. I'm damn proud to be Again, I would remind members of the public, if they find this funny, you can stand up and leave. Whether you like it or not, I am here because I've been elected by the community. I think you need to be reminded that this is the electors' meeting, this is a community's meeting, and they have a right to be yeah. here. So uh, if they don't agree with you, it's no right for you to ask them to leave. Sorry, sorry, Ms. the last sentence of my question. I actually said that I'd look forward to hearing your insights, reasonings, and any steps that may be taken to reinstate the publication of the President's report. If you are happy to publish the calendars of all councillors so that you can showcase all councillors, I think the community would be happy to see what you all do. I'll leave that with you to that, work your way. Sorry, Ms Rich, was that a question or a statement? Well, I find it a little bit disingenuous that I can't answer that when you've walked away. Are there any other questions from the floor? Thank you, ma'am. Would like to come forward? Uh, Margaret Carla, 70 Randall Road in Mardala. Um, good evening, councillors. My first question is from, in relation to the Shire's review of rating for smaller rural properties. Does the Shire intend to remove from their records an assessment of the equine industry properties rated as GRV and hence deemed not to be engaged in a rural pursuit? We'll take that question on notice. Thank you, Ms. Carla. My second question, what is being dumped on Web Reserve and does the Shire have the appropriate approvals to do so? Again, I thank you for the question. Ms Carla will take that question on notice. Okay. Thank you, Ms Carla. Are there any other questions from the floor? Ms Rich.
Just sorry, Mrs Bond, um, as has been pointed out, this is the electors' meeting, so I'm happy to sit here all night listening to questions from ratepayers. Thank you, Mrs Rich. Thank you. I am a concerned member of the community who has observed a growing unease among residents regarding the closure of the waste transfer station and the perceived lack of information surrounding the continuation of this essential service in our shire. It has come to my attention that there is a considerable level of concern regarding an incident that transpired on November 11, 2023. On this date, Mr James Griffiths, acting on behalf of residents, contacted you by phone seeking information about the potential reopening of the waste transfer station. The conversation reportedly took place on speakerphone, allowing a group of people present in a local establishment to hear your response, wherein you asserted that the waste transfer station would never reopen. Given the significance of waste management services to our community and the impact of such decisions on residents' daily lives, there is a collective interest in understanding the rationale behind the closure and your statement regarding the permanence of this decision. The lack of clarity has contributed to heightened concern amongst community members, reinforcing the need for transparent communication. Considering the aforementioned incident, I kindly request that you provide official clarification on the reasons behind the closure of the waste transfer station and the ac accuracy of the statement made on November 11, 2023. This information is crucial for our community to comprehend the situation fully and to alleviate any apprehensions that may have arisen due to the statements made by yourself in your official position as Shire President. I think for the question is rich. Um, I was looking for my mobile phone, but it's not here. Uh, 11th of November, of course, as all good Australians will know on the Rooms Remembrance Day. So 11th of November, I was down at the bar for Cenotaph for the Remembrance Day service. Where I was afterwards, I don't recall. I don't have my phone with me for my diary. However, what I would say, if you say that's happened, I've got no reason to doubt. You're an ex-Shire president and I would never question your integrity. But what I would say is if I did say it, I would have said yes. The waste transfer station is not opening this year. So you can cast aspersions. But my recollection, if I said that, and I don't even remember saying that, but I know James Griffiths and I would have had a conversation with him. I've had a conversation with Jimmy several times. If I did say it, if, it would have been, it's not reopening this year. Quite clearly, and I think it's important to note that you were the Shire president when the waste transfer station was closed. That, I think, is a pertinent point to understand too. So um, if you do have a complaint, if you do have a concern about my behaviour, my position, my um, leadership as a Shire president, I'm sure you of all people, Ms Rich, would know the processes to make those complaints. Uh, is there another question? Thank you. Are there any other questions from the floor? Thank you. Public questions is now concluded at 7.34pm. Um, item or agenda item 3.3 is public statements of which prior notice has been given. There is nil. Uh, none received, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. CEO. That brings us to 3.4 public statements received from the floor. Are there any public statements? Thank you, Mrs. Bond. I want to thank Rob Cole, Shay Mack and Nathan Bishop for keeping everyone informed about matters within our Shire. Very refreshing for a change. The issue remains that any groups receiving any financial payments from the Shire do not provide the minutes of their group to council for public perusal and details of where and what the money was spent on. This must be addressed immediately and don't suggest it is up to the group to provide their minutes and financial spend of said money because they will not do this. Graffiti on the brick wall on the housing estate along Hopkinson Road from Thomas to Abernethy is an eyesore. Could we have this cleaned off? I'm sick of seeing Richos, RIP, and a whole lot of other stuff all along that wall. They've cleaned it off at the other end, but not down the Abernethy Road. 
I was told it was $50,000 put aside to put up decent lights on the corner of Hopkinson and Abernethy Roads. Please don't tell me those candles we can barely see are $50,000 worth. How many more crashes and deaths will it take before action is taken? The intersection is clear. There is no excuse. Now, the Watkins Road tip. For Mr Hansman's information, that Watkins Road tip has been contaminated for more than 20 years. People on Kellett Drive in Oakford are living on contamination that this shire moved from the Ranad site down to Kellett Drive. Honkin Highway is built over the top of contamination that was moved from Ranad site in plastic bags in a shire truck down underneath where they put the road over. The amount of contamination in this shire you would be shocked at. That tip should never have been reopened until it was checked thoroughly. Yeah, I've lived here 28 years, so I know a little bit about the contamination and how they tried to hide it. And there are councillors that know exactly what happened up there and everywhere else in this damn shire. But don't people stand here and say, the tip can't open. And why question him about whether he works part-time as a cop or whether he should be full-time as a president? He's the president now. He's running it his way. If we don't like it, we can make it very clear in a polite manner. Don't tell him to tell you whether he should be a part-time cop or whether he should be working strictly as a president. You don't have that right. Neither do I and neither does anyone else. And as for the councillors here, I want to pay attention to some of the people sitting in this gallery because I'm fed up to the teeth with all of it. I'm sick and tired of the lies. And I'm fed up with people that make false statements. But if you're prepared to go to court and put that false statement before a magistrate, be my guest. Thank you, Mrs. Bond. Are there any other statements from the floor? There being no further statements from the floor, statement time is now concluded at 7.38 p.m. Agenda item 3.5, motions of which notice has been given, um, which there is nil. Uh, none received, Mr. Pratt. Thank you, Mr. CEO. That brings us to item number 3.6, which is motions received from the floor. Are there any motions that want to be received from the floor? Thank you, Mr. Ball. Do you have one? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Ball. Um, my motion is that this meeting of ratepayers recommends that the Shire makes no change from 26th of January to Australia Day unless the Australian government makes a change. And the conduct of naturalisation ceremonies will continue on Australia Day. Thank you, Mr Ball. Have you written that uh, yes. motion? Yes, Thank I you. Have. And you prepared to pass that to the minutes? Yes, Thank you, Mr Ball. Is there a seconder for that motion? Thank you, Mr. Tomlinson. Oh, sorry, I was going to write it up. Sorry, Mr. Ball. Sorry, Mr. CEO. And probably, sorry, Ms. Gibson. Mr. President, I don't need to speak to the motion. I think it's self explanatory. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ball. Is there a seconder for the motion? I think Mr. Tomlinson was happy to second it. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Uh, Mr. Atwell's opposed. Uh, Mr. Ball, would you like to open debate and talk to that motion? Thank you, Mr. President. Across Australia for the last few months, there's been a lot of controversy, a lot of debate, and division in the community over a day when we when we celebrate this nation. It doesn't matter what day it is, because there'll be something wrong with the day that's chosen. If you make it a day in June, it'll be because it's WA Day and it's a problem. If you make it in October, it's the King's birthday and it's the wrong day. So no matter what day we choose, it's wrong. We've had an established day for many years. We've celebrated it. We've defended it. And the Shire needs to avoid all of the controversy and the uncertainty that the debate's bringing about. And this is simply 
emotion to see that we retain stability in the Shire. Just stay with what we've got until the nation decides that it wants to make a change. Let's not be a, an outlier and try and do something different. Let's, let's go with the nation as a whole. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Mr. Thompson, would you like to speak or reserve? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Atwell, would you like to speak against? Long, uh, my reason for opposing it is that I personally have a problem with Australia Day. Uh, that's my personal point of view, and I do not think Shire should be interfering in Australia Day. It's up to the community as a whole, not just the Shire, to put down a point of view which the Shire, which is asking our Shire and our residents to follow. It's up to every individual to make their own decision, and I think it's completely wrong for the Shire to have a position on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atwell. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for the motion? Thank you, Mr. Ball. Would you like to um, close the vote? You said what you're going to say. Okay. All those in favour of the motion, councillors can vote too if they want to. Okay. All those against, the motion is passed. Carried is probably a better term. Thank you. Uh, are there any other motions from the floor? Thank you, Ms. Rich. Please come forward. Thank you. I have a number of uh, motions. So, my first one being following from this meeting that council requests the chief executive officer to one, as part of the 2024-25 budget process, prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by council to design and construct appropriately, approximately 53 metres extension to the footpath on the south side of Jarrodale Road, opposite the Nettleton Road intersection as shown in attachment one to a previous resolution to provide safe pedestrian access to visitors and residents of Jarrodale. Two, as part of the 2024-25 budget process, prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by council to engage external consultants to undertake community consultation, investigation, concept design and costings for implementation of appropriate traffic calming treatments along Jarrodale Road, through the Jarrodale town site to better manage the anticipated increase in traffic and pedestrian movements in preparation for Trails Town status and Tonkin Highway extension. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rich. And um, we might need to pause for a few moments while Ms. Gibson um, writes that motion up on the um, screen.
Um, Ms. Rich, can you see the screen there? Can you just please read that and make sure that's um, the motion that you've put forward? Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Rich. Is there a seconder uh, for the motion that everyone should be able to see on the screens? Thank you, Ms. Berry. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Ms. Bond, you're opposed to it? Thank you, Ms. Bond. Uh, Ms. Rich, would you like to come forward and open debate, please? Thank you. Footpaths for our residents and our visitors, especially to our areas that we promote through the Shire as being our jewels in the crown are extremely important. The safety of our residents and our community members and our visitors is, is hugely important and it should be important to everyone. Secondly, the time frame that it takes to have community consultation, investigations, concept design, costings for implementation done can take a number of years. And if this project isn't started now, we will end up with the Tonkin Highway extension built. We will end up with extra traffic through Jarradale at the same time that Shire is pushing for Jarradale to be a trails town with nothing to slow traffic through Jarradale. Our community in Jarradale are already up in arms over the traffic and the speed of heavy vehicles through the Jarradale town site. The majority of those are right of way vehicles, they have every right to be there they don't have the right to break the law with the speeds that they do. As a Shire owned road, as a road that the Shire is responsible for, it is in the hands of council to actually prioritise and make this road a priority so that the years of work that needs to be done can be started so that the main street through Jarradale for its residents and for visitors to the area is a safe place for them to, to traverse. I noted with interest that the Shire went to Canberra early November 2023. They took with them a brochure of asks, which includes $159 million worth of roadworks. I also note that through that brochure, Jarradale Road is not a priority for anything, even though us that live locally know that it is an extremely important road and is extremely important for the tourism that is building within the area. I also note that that brochure went and was given and talked to politicians without it actually coming to council and having council approval, thus not having any approval or oversight by community members before it was distributed. So my view is that this project, knowing that it was Sorry to interrupt, years, um, Mr President, if I may. Is something that... Sorry, Ms Rich, can you please stop talking? We've got a council would like to... So um, I just uh, have some question about confidentiality of the information that's being shared at the moment. Um, Ms Richards just said this is information that hasn't come to Council, so if Council's not aware of it, I'm not sure uh, how the general public would be aware of it, and if the general public's not aware of it, perhaps it shouldn't be discussed in this forum. Thanks. I can answer that question for Councillor Duggan. After the fact of that meeting, this Council here actually supported, after the fact, the brochure there is an attachment to the December 2023 OCM. So if you'd like to go back and reread your agenda and the meeting minutes and the attachments, you will find the information there. 
which is all publicly available. Thank you, Ms Rich, and thank you for the question, Councillor Duggan. Um, is there a the second that was Ms Berry? Ms Berry, would you like to come forward and speak for the motion, or would you like to reserve? Thank you. Is there, I think it was Ms Bond or Mrs Bond that was against the motion. Would you like to come forward, Mrs Bond, and um, open your debate? You don't need to go through making a, a huge mountain, a financial mountain. Now, if you're the president and we have these people here as our council officers, I would assume that they've got the brains enough to put something together and they don't have to be told by an ex-president how to do it. So that's why I object to it, because it's just a whole lot of rubbish. Cut it short, don't have a big financial burden on the ratepayer. And how about you bring back the orange buses? If you're so damn concerned about safety on that road, bring the orange buses back. They should never have been removed. Who stood up and said, don't take them away? Thank you, Mrs Bond. Is anyone like to speak for the motion? Ms Rich, would you like to come forward and close your debate? Thank you, Mrs uh, or Ms Rich. Um, all those in favour of the motion as per the screen? All those against? Motion is carried. Oh, are there any other motions from the floor? Mrs Rich, please come forward. Before I state my second motion, I would like to correct you, please. I am Mrs Rich. I am happily married and have been for a large amount of time. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Rich. I unequivocally apologise. I will now refer to you as Mrs. Rich. Thank you. My second motion this evening is that following from this meeting, that Council requests the Chief Executive Officer, as part of the 2024-25 budget process, prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by Council to design and construct a fence above the retaining wall that separates the Byford Scout Hall land and the Byford and District Country Club car park. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Um, might just pause for a moment while the agenda, well, the minute takers can uh, transpose that motion. Thank you, Ms Gibson. Um, Mrs Rich, are you happy with the wording as per the screen? Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs Rich. Is there a seconder for the motion as per? Thank you, Mr Ball. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Mr. Tomlinson, are you scratching or are you putting your hand up? It's not being at an auction. You've got to be careful. You might buy something. No one's opposed to this motion. Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Are there any other motions from the floor? Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Thank you. My next motion is 
that following from this meeting that council requests the chief executive officer as part of the 2024-25 budget process prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by council to design and construct the remaining length of Baskerville Road between Tonkin Street and Kernan Street, Mundijong. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Can you please provide that um, wording to Ms. Gibson so she can transpose onto the screen? As a copy of it. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Rich. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Ritchie. You had with the wording as it appears on the screen. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Is there a seconder for this motion? Thank you, Mr. Atwell. Is anyone opposed to this motion? Thank you, Mrs. Bond. Uh, Mrs. Rich, you'd like to come forward and open debate, please. Hang on, Mrs. Bond, we have to have the mover speak first. The mover has to speak first. You can take this opportunity to um, make some notes, Mrs. Bond. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Thank you. I'm sure that the residents of Baskerville Road are extremely grateful to see the work between Lee Street and Tolkien Street start over the last week or so, and are extremely excited about the fact that their road is going to be upgraded, which leaves this section between Tonkin and Coonan Street, which is, to be quite honest, a disgrace of a road. It is a section of road that the men's shed use on a regular basis with a large volume of traffic that utilises the men's shed. And it is a piece of road in our shire that we need to have in a better condition than what it is. That is the reason for putting this forward tonight. If this is supported, it would see the completion of Baskerville Road, which I'm sure uh, anybody that lives in Mundijong knows the general condition of it at this point in time, and it is something that is way past time in having it done. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mrs Rich. I just want to make a comment as a presiding member with the last comment that Mrs Rich made. Just I'll remind everyone that whilst motions may be passed tonight, those motions come back to council. Council still has to endorse the motions as passed by the electors, so please remember that. Uh, thank you, Mrs Rich. Um, Mr Atwell, would you like to speak or reserve? I suggest you want to speak because you're walking forward. Thank you. Seconds of motion, they should speak to it. And uh, actually, um, without even Miss, uh, Mrs Rich bringing this up, is the fact that I've had two phone calls from people I know who have asked me in the last few days why they're fixing up one end of Baskerville, not the other. The other end of Baskerville is quite bad. And I mean, I mean, it's like, I'm guessing about 100 metres or so. So, um, yeah, I've had a couple of complaints as the CEO. I mentioned it to him as well. So, yeah, that's why I second the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Atwell, and I think they say being quoted back to yourself is always an honour, so thank you. Um, Mrs Bond, would you like to come forward and speak against? Why hasn't this been done four, five, six years ago? Why are we only bringing all this up tonight? Uh, the council officers so incompetent they couldn't have done this four or five or six years ago. Was it ever brought up then? Has it all been ignored so that it's just become an irritation? I like safety, but I don't like it when certain people are getting privileged areas dealt with and other people are being ignored. And I would think that we should be concentrating far more on the orange bus at Jaredale to make sure all the kids are safe on the bus. Not worrying about a damn footpath. That's not going to save the kids if a car runs off the road. And just fixing up somebody's street because they're friends with someone, that's not fair. I don't care whether any of you like it or not, but we've got councillors here and we've got council officers. How about using them and how about them doing their job? 
Thank you, Mrs Bond. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for this motion? Thank you, Mrs Rich. Would you like to close? Thank you, Mrs Rich. All those in favour of the motion? All those against? Motion is carried. Uh, Mrs Rich, do you have another motion? Please come forward. While Mrs Rich is doing that, is there anyone else in the gallery who would like to move a motion? Just so I can get ready? No? OK. Thank you, Mrs Rich. Thank you. My next motion is that following this meeting, that Council request the Chief Executive Officer, as part of the 2024-25 budget process, prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by Council to design and construct a length of unmade road between Windmill Ave North and Windmill Ave South in Serpentine. Uh, thank you, Mrs Rich. Have you circulated that motion? Yep, thank you very much. Are you happy with the wording as you walk past the screen? Thank you, Mrs Rich. Is there a seconder for this motion? Thank you, Mr Atwell. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Thank you, Mrs Bond. Um, would you like me to acknowledge in the minutes that you are opposed to the motion? Thank you. Um, Mrs Rich, would you like to open debate? Thank you. This section of unmade road on Woodmill Avenue in Serpentine is the result of two different subdivisions being built at two different times and with the information that went through the WAPC resulting in a piece of road that is unmade and has now been left for the Shire to make. It is my understanding that there should have been emergency services gates uh, installed at each end uh, of this unmade road but what we ha now have is we have an estate of smaller blocks which has been recently developed and we have on the south edge of windmill avenue or the south end of windmill avenue larger five acre blocks uh, with the road a piece of dirt in the middle um, i think the residents in that area deserve to have this piece of road built so that they have access out onto Walker Road and out onto Walk uh, Bottle Road. Um, it gives them continuity and different access points in uh, the regard to fire, etc. So I think it's extremely important that this road is built. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Rich. Um, Mr. Atwell, would you like to speak for? You're going to, aren't you? <laughs> thank you, Mr. Atwell. Yes, well, I don't think it matters much whether um, other other um, projects haven't been bought up or not. Having projects bought up is what the main thing is. I think if anyone wants a project bought up, they should actually go forward and put it up. I mean, it's not as though we're uh, we're bound by any rules that said we can't put up for a project. And I believe it's good to have any any project that has merit. I'm sure the uh, officers in there who are very astute would be able to uh, manage that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Atwell. Um, Mrs Bond, just for, um, I guess, formalities, you have opposed the motion, but is it correct that you don't want to speak? Would you like to come forward and speak or would you like to not speak? Okay, so I'll record it. I'll record it that you're opposed to it, but you don't want to make any comment. Um, I'm just going to ask a question, if I may, to the mover and the seconder, have any of these projects been put forward to any of the councillors, either in any of the wards or in the South Ward, to bring forward to council? I can't, sorry, Mrs Rich, I can't hear you. Okay, so my question to you then is either have you or Mr Atwell 
put forward your concerns about these roads in the South Ward to any of the councillors here tonight or at any time. I understand that this is an electors meeting and given how electors meetings have run in the past, we are allowed to ask questions either submitted or from the floor. We are allowed to make statements either submitted or from the floor and we are allowed to move motions either submitted or from the floor. It is not up to us to whether they have been given to a councillor to substantiate their validity to come to the electors meeting. I am an elector in the Shire. I've been an elector in the Shire for a long time and as my right as an elector, I am here tonight. I have come to listen. I have come to accept the annual report from the 2022-23 financial year and I am here with some motions which I believe, which I have seen across our Shire, are valid and need to be put forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs Rich. Um, well yeah, that's fine. Okay, is there any... Sorry, Mr. Atwell, did you want to...? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Atwell. Um, so we've got Mrs Bond, who's opposed to the motion. Um, Mrs Rich, did you want to... I'm oh, sorry, I should ask, is anyone else for the motion? We are like to speak for the motion. No, that being the case, Mrs Rich, you'd like to come forward and close. Thank you, Mrs Rich. All those in favour of the motion as on the screen, please raise your hands. One, two, three. All those opposed, motion is carried. Um, I think, Mrs Bond, do you have a motion that you want to put forward? No? Can you please come forward to the microphone? That's far more important than anything else. Was there any councillor or any council officer been asked to fix the footpath there so the elderly could safely move along on the footpath? Sorry, Mrs. Bond, is that a question? Would you like to? Okay. Um, my understanding is um, that council is trying to put together a priority works for footpaths, and a councillor has actually specifically mentioned that footpath as part of um, capital okay. works. Yes, and that's what I've just said. If you want to move a motion, Mrs. Bond, as I've been told tonight, selectors. Okay. Would you like? Would you like some assistance with the wording? I have to sit and think a little bit. Um, so you'd like to say footpath for Baptist Care, uh, yeah. Soldiers Road, and I'm looking at Councillor Max. I think he's advocated for this in the past. But I think that should be a priority and that should be done as soon as possible. So it's Graceford you're talking about? Yes. Graceford, so Soldiers Road, and... They've, they've been on about that for years. Yeah. So can you have Mrs. Bond, you have to look at the screen, just help um, Ms. Gibson with the wording. Your plans for the path. We all know how concrete goes down, all right? But you don't need to spend a lot of money on business plans. Just go so perhaps the footpath. that the footpath linking Braceford Village yes. to the Byford Town Centre. That's where they want to go in their wheelchairs. Yep, okay. I understand. Can we say, Mrs Bond, rather than be fixed, be constructed? Would you be happy with that at the end, maybe as a suggestion? Okay. That's right, that's what I mean. So the last bit says fixed, maybe we make that be constructed. Thank you, Mrs Bond. Can you, are you able to, um, you can see that? Are you happy with the wording? Yeah. So the footpath. I want to get this footpath and just get it done quickly and get someone who knows the hell what they're doing and get it over with so that they've got it there before this Christmas. Possible? Did you want to put a time frame on that or just leave it as it is? Yeah, next week. Say again? Next week. 
No, we can do anything we put your rates up. We're not doing that. No, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, so uh, can I just interrupt? Yeah. Um, I just want to confirm: is it part Soldiers Road as well? Because Gordon Way, at the back of Baptist Care, actually goes all the way to Abernethy Road. So is it whereas um, to go on to Gordon Way, it's Turner Road and down to Soldiers Road? But my understanding um, from our previous discussions that it was actually from the back of Baptist Care Gordon Way, which follows through, goes over the intersection of the roundabout at Mead Street and follows through to Abernethy Road. So was Soldiers Road part of it, Mrs Bond? They want a path and footpath, one that doesn't have any bumps in it, yeah. so they can use it for their wheelchairs and walkers and everything else. So the, the intent of the motion is to enable the seniors that are at the Baptist Care Village to go from the Baptist Care Village into Bife into the shops. Yes, so we can get this yeah. Okay, we might. Yeah, I think that. I think that motion. Is there a seconder for the motion? Thank you, Mr. Wig. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Mrs. Richard, do you have any other motions? Please come forward. My next motion reads as follows, following from this meeting. The Council requests the Chief Executive Officer, as part of the 2024-25 budget process, prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by Council to the design and construction of a replacement fence around the stormwater retention base, basin between 14 and 18 Majajal Loop Mardella. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Are you happy with the wording as it appears on the screen? Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Is there a seconder for the motion? Thank you, Mr. Atwell. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Sorry, Mrs. Bond, are you opposed? Okay. Um, Mrs. Rich, would you like to come forward and open debate? We have a stormwater retention basin that used to have a fence around it, which no longer has a fence around it. We have small children that live in the area. We have an area where it is a cul-de-sac. And once we start getting rains in the cooler months, we have a drowning risk for children that live in that area. So the request is through this to actually have that fence that was there replaced making that area safer for the children because, God forbid, we do not want to lose any of our little people within the Shire. Thank you, Mrs Richard, so we don't lose anyone. Um, Mr Atwell, would you like to come forward and speak? Yes, I guess my um, reason for backing is very similar to what um, Michelle mentioned, that when the safety of the kids, let's face it, they're probably our most precious asset, although as I get older, I'm not quite sure whether older people might be a precious asset too. But, uh, yeah, that's my main reason for seconding this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Atwell. Um, Mrs Bond, I've got your opposition uh, noted. You don't want to say anything, is that correct? Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone that would like to speak for the motion? Thank you. Mrs. Rich, would you like to close or we'll just go straight to the vote? Thank you. All those in favour? Anyone against? Thank you. Oh, motion is passed. Mrs. Rich, would you, are there any more motions you'd like to move? Motion 
My next motion, I will actually give you a small amount of information so that you understand what it is. In the south end of the Shire, we have a water hydrant that is used by contractors, firefighters, around a lot of the time. It is on one of our regional distributor roads. And sometime recently in the last few months, we've actually had local contractors pay to have hard stand repaired so that the use of this uh, water hydrant could continue. So the motion that I put forward tonight is that following from this meeting, the council requests the chief executive officer as part of the 2024-25 budget process Prepare and submit a business case for funding consideration by Council to design and construct a substantial hard stand for the safe collection of water during fire emergencies at the water hydrant located west of the rail crossing on Elliott Road, Eastbrook. Thank you, Mrs Rich. And I see that the minute taker has got a copy, so we'll just bear with us while she types it up. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Is there a seconder for the motion? Thank you, Mr. Apple. Would you like to speak or reserve? Yeah. Sorry, I think I've um, jumped the gun here. Is anyone opposed? Okay. Um, that being the case, the motion has passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. CEO. This passed unanimously. Is there another motion? Say again. Yes, certainly, Mr. Atwell. Not entirely sure of how to uh, word the motion. I have spoke to uh, the Trossig on this matter. Uh, in a recent time, I've noticed that when when a um, a uh, or some subdivision was done on an industrial block that they just annihilated about every tree on the property, including some very, very substantial trees that had been there for probably the size of the trees four, five hundred years, probably four hundred years. Although I'm not an arborist, so I don't know exactly whether it was true or not. But I'm just wondering if there's some way that we can put into motion, and I've, probably, I've never thought of this before, but some way we could put into motion where we can actually try and get some control of maybe not all the trees that they knock down but significantly the, the, the you know the number of trees and i know industrial areas don't necessarily lend themselves to having trees on but i'm sure quite sure that there is a, a um a place a place for trees in these industrial things and I'm not sure how to word it exactly but that's the best i can explain thank you mr atwell my understanding is and please director correct me if I mislead anyone, um, with the state government now, we need clearing permits and there needs to be an offset with trees. Is that for private property as well as Shire property or is that only for Shire property? Uh, thank you for the question. Subdivision is one of those activities which are actually exempt from compliance with the um, clearing permit or clearing regulations. Um, the um, general approach is, um, as we sort of see throughout our urbanising and, and now our industrialising land, is generally removal of most trees on, on um, the land, um, attempts to retain trees um, are certainly um, possible. Um, it sort of is um, something that you know, potentially could benefit on some um, direction in that regard. Um, that being the case, with the motion that Mr Atwell's trying to put forward, are you happy to spend a couple of moments helping him word something that could probably achieve what he's trying to achieve? That, that might be, Mr President, that, you know, that a report be presented to Council on how um, trees, more trees can be retained during the subdivision process? Yeah, I was sort of echoing, thinking the same same kind of approach. 
Yeah. Are you happy with that, Mr. Atwell? Yeah, I, so, I, I, yeah look, put to the lobby for retention of 3GA. Yes. Yeah. Basically, that was the motion you saw. Yep. I don't think that's to be too convoluted. No. Know what, what we're. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping to do it too. Options for retaining trees. Yeah, what's increasing the retention of trees and uh, increasing the retention of trees? So report the council on increasing. No, no, no. Increasing the retention. During the subdivision, during or just yeah. Are you happy with that, Mr. Atwell? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, is there a seconder for the motion? Thank you, Mrs. Rich. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Thank you. Motion is carried unanimously. Without looking to the left of the room, I'm going to look to the right. Is there anyone that wants to move a motion? I'll now go back to the left. Mrs. Rich, would you like to move another one? Thank you. Please come forward. I don't have another motion to move, but what I would like to say is thank you very much to the Shire officers that are here this evening and the work that they did through the 2022-23 financial year, especially the finance team with the position that they have left us in because given where we were a number of years ago to where we are now, they have done a tremendous job. So thank you very much. Um. Thank you, Mrs. Rich. And whilst that should have been um, as per 3.4 on the agenda statements from the floor, um, I do acknowledge your comments and I do echo them. So thank you very much for coming forward and making those comments. And I think it's fair to um, say that the staff have done a good job and they continue to do so. Um, there being the final call using the theme as an option, um, are there any other motions that any member present would like to move? Thank you. That being the case, I declare the meeting of or well, the annual general meeting of electors closed at 8.25 p.m. Thank you very much for your attendance. And in closure, um, I remind everyone that the nomination is open tomorrow being the 1st of February.